Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, welcome to all my new subscribers who have uh, turned up out of the blue in the last couple of weeks. Uh, really good to have you here with us. You might be wondering why I'm so dressed up today. Well, I wanted to make a follow-up video to my first video about getting hired as a web developer without a degree and answer some more questions and just do a bit of follow-up on the issues that came up out of that video. So just a little bit of recap, obviously when I was looking for my first job as a developer, I was coming in uh, without a computer science background. So I got my first job uh, through a posting on a job board. And now obviously when I was looking for a job, I was already working somewhere else. I really loved that job. So I wasn't too stressed about having to move because I didn't like my job. So I could really afford to take my time and take it slowly. Also as a little bit of background to the advice I'm kind of giving in this video, I worked for a period of time as a recruiter at a high tech company in uh, London. So a lot of the advice I'm giving is just coming from personal experience of working there and doing that job for a while and kind of getting to know the ins and outs of what recruiters are looking for. I had a couple of comments on some other videos that I've made about um, you know, what to do to get that first job. So I thought this video would be a great way to sort of sum up that advice in one place. So obviously the first thing you're gonna be doing when looking for a new job is putting a resume together. Now, first things first with the resume, you wanna keep it short. I recommend a page if you're brand new to the industry, two pages maximum if you're kind of a mid-level uh, developer or anything like that. But really, if you're brand new, keep it down to one page. So along with keeping it down to one page, you've gotta stay on point. You've gotta keep it really clear and concise what you've done. If you're new, just list off the projects you've worked on, list off the technologies you know, uh, if you can provide links, put links down so the person looking at your resume can actually go and see what you've done. If you've already in the industry and you're looking to move on to your next job or climb up the ladder, I think try and keep your experience to within the last five years. Uh, a recruiter isn't necessarily going to care if you've been out of college for a few years, what your GPA was. Uh, they just want to know what your degree was in. They don't care about your high school. They don't care about what clubs you were in or what societies you're a member of. Just keep it relevant to the job you're applying for. You also want to keep your resume looking plain. I know it sounds boring, but a recruiter is reading a lot of resumes in one day and having lots of colors or diagrams and stuff like that is just distracting. You want to get in there. You want to read the experience as quickly as possible to see what the candidate has already done. Keep each resume relevant to the place that you're applying to. Now, this sounds like a lot of work and a lot of effort, but try and tailor your resume to the place that you're applying for. Like do your research in the company you're applying to and if you don't think a piece of information is gonna be relevant on your resume, don't be afraid to take it out. Like don't be afraid to get rid of info if it doesn't need to be there. I've also left an awesome link down in the description below uh, of a link to a great post about how to use SEO tactics to build a CV. It sounds weird and it sounds wacky, but really just give it a look and you'll understand what I'm talking about and how it's actually really a genius piece of advice. So I had a question come up about cover letters. What do you do? How do you do them? What should they consist of? A cover letter is a great way of giving your application a bit of personality, and it's a great way of sort of expanding upon your resume. I personally recommend trying to send something above and beyond your resume with each application you send. Now with a cover letter, you're gonna wanna make every single one unique. When it comes to writing a cover letter, I recommend just Google it, look online for some inspiration. Obviously every industry has a little bit of a different touch, a few different things that you can include. But if you look around and read a few different examples of cover letters, you can get some really good ideas of what to include in yours. Don't rewrite your whole resume in your cover letter, but I would certainly say summarize it or summarize the strong points that you have in your resume. Maybe even summarize the key skills that you have and how it would be applicable if you were to be working there. Also include a little bit of information about the company. So if you're already using their product, write it in the cover letter that you're using the company's product already, or that you're familiar with them, or that you're a customer, or you just simply love it. It may sound a bit cheesy and it may sound a bit weird, but recruiters at companies that are directly recruiting love to hear that the person that's applying for a job there actually is aware of the company beforehand. Now, sometimes you can upload a cover letter uh, directly to a company's website along with your resume. Uh, sometimes some websites have a, like a text box that you can just put it in there. If you're emailing your resume directly to a person, 
then I would put the cover letter element as the body of the email that you're sending. So you've put your resume together, you've written out a nice cover letter, you've sent off everything to the company, they've given you a call and they've scheduled an interview with you. Right, so <laughs> what to wear? I think this is a really important factor because first impressions really count or it's a subconscious projection of how you see yourself. So when I was working as a recruiter, uh, I would usually recommend to all my candidates to go in a suit and tie regardless of company, regardless of position they're applying to. Um, but I would say you can wear a suit and tie, but wear a suit and tie with a shirt and jacket mixture that if you have to take the tie off, it's still gonna look good. It's like say you turn up there and you see it's a really casual environment, don't be afraid to take off the tie and just wear a suit and uh, shirt. Now, if you've been recommended the job or somebody's passed your CV there or you've got an interview through networking and you know this for a fact, don't be afraid to go with like a polo shirt or a button-down shirt and a nice pair of trousers and shoes. You don't necessarily have to go in a, in a suit, um, but use that piece of advice with, you know, air on the side of caution. Got to research the company that you're going to before you get there. I, I can't stress it enough, but even if you know the basics, so uh, when were they founded, what do they do, who the main players in the company are, just really get a base grip on who and what and where you actually are. It also shows initiative to your interviewer that you've done a little bit of homework. Uh, another thing I'd recommend is look up the person you're gonna be interviewing with on LinkedIn. Like this way you can learn what their background is, what they know, what their seniority is. It just, it helps relieve a lot of that stress of an interview. If you kind of know who you're gonna be meeting beforehand, you wanna be natural in the interview, you wanna be relaxed. Companies are looking to hire people, they're not looking to hire robots. And it's not the end of the world if you don't get the job that you're interviewing for. So just go in there and just chill and be relaxed. You wanna do your homework before going to an interview. This is more for tech roles or developer roles, um, but just brush up on the language that you will be using in your job potentially. I've left a great link down below uh, for a GitHub repo of a load of interview questions and uh, stuff to just brush up on before you go to interview. It's a great resource to use. Another thing you can do is use Google, Google the company you're applying to, a uh, programming test. Sometimes people might have put the challenge out there. Some companies give a programming test that you take home to do, so some people might have the answers out there. Uh, Glassdoor is a great resource that you can use. A lot of people put um, reviews of their interview experience there with the questions that were asked. So do your homework and try and, you know, get ahead of the curve and find out what they're actually going to be asking you in interview before you get there. Do you have any questions for us? The dreaded end of interview question that I'm sure everyone has gone through or everyone doesn't really know how to answer. I personally am terrible at this point of the interview and it's taken me a long time to get used to asking, even if it's a really basic question to my interviewer. I think it's important to ask a question, even if it's only one, and even if you know the answer, because it shows that you're engaged and it shows you've been paying attention and it shows that you wanna learn more about the company um, to the interviewer, to the person that's interviewing you. It kind of reflects really well on you as a candidate that they're not just saying, oh, this is the end, we're done, let's go all go home. You can even ask really basic stuff like, Ask of the interviewer how long have you been working here? Do you enjoy your job? What does a norm, like what does an average day look like? It sounds weird and it usually catches them really off guard because they're not used to being asked that type of question because it's quite personal. But it's a great icebreaker and it's a really good way to get a inside view on what it's like day to day working there. You can also learn a lot from somebody about how they answer that question. So it's you know nice to catch somebody off guard and ask them that. So those are my quick tips, my quick follow-up tips to uh, getting your first job. But here's another couple of things to consider in the job hunt as a whole. Don't get upset if you don't hear back from an application. Like it's true, when people say that they get tons of applications on a daily basis, it does happen for most jobs nowadays. So if you send off a resume and a cover letter and you don't hear anything back, don't beat yourself up, don't get too uptight about it not the end of the world, there's plenty more jobs out there to apply for. If you've sent your application or you've sent your resume via email to somebody, I would recommend two or three days later, if you haven't heard anything back, send a follow-up email. 
Maybe they read your email, they just you know fell through the cracks, they forgot about it, or you might just get a no, which at the end of the day is a lot better than hearing nothing at all. Don't get hung up on one job that you're applying to. Like you've really got to keep your options open and you've really just got to keep applying and keep the process of interviewing going until you find the thing that really ticks all your boxes for you. What I'm saying is there's plenty of other opportunities out there and you've just got to keep your options open. Have somebody else read your resume before you send it. This is super important. It's literally a recruiter's job to sit there all day and read resumes. So if you've got any grammatical errors, any spelling errors, it's gonna jump out from straight away and it doesn't look good. So get somebody else to read your resume and have them go over it and take, if they have criticism, take it constructively and try and act on it. And finally, just relax. If you got into an interview, you've already ticked a lot of boxes on a lot of people's forms. There's a reason you're there. So just relax and just take it easy. That's all. If you're prepared, you'll be fine. So good luck. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, then please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and leave me some feedback down below. I'd love to know why you uh, watched the video up to this point. And if you think it'll help anybody else, go ahead and share it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you uh, hopefully next time.